Can you hear me? Okay. Am I making noise? Enough noise so you can hear me? Yes. You can hear me through the through the mic on the stream? Yeah. Like you can hear that dice fall. Okay, well, I mean, I suppose that's how it's going to have to be for now. Like, I just heard the dice fall. Okay, well, I mean, there's going to be a delay, so that's okay.
<clears throat> well, let's see how this goes. Okay. Oh, okay. So I guess here we go. I'm not really sure what I'm doing here today. I guess I'm just, I don't really need to test these decks out, but I just have fun playing them every once in a while. And so I guess that's what we're going to do today. Um, because right now what we're going to be playing or what I'm going to be playing is I'm going to do a three-way battle against, um, Dragons and Angels and Demons, and th these are all tribal decks that I constructed a while back with the purpose of uh, essentially making decks that I could play with people who know nothing about magic. So in, in a sense, they're meant to be real easy to play, pretty fun with some powerful... Each of them kind of have their unique powerful moves, and there's, there's actually 10 of these decks. So these are three of the big tribes. Um, there's two for each color of magic. Uh, and so dragons and goblins are the red ones. Then soldiers and angels are the white decks. Zombies and demons are the black decks. And then thopters, sphinxes, elves, and uh, hydras are the other two colors of magic. So we're just going to be messing with these three today. Um, and with these decks, like I said, they kind of come with their own quirks and things you have to do. But generally, the idea is that they're pretty simplistic to do. There isn't a lot of combos or control elements. It's mostly just kind of play big things or play lots of little things and then see if you can get through your opponent. So a lot of combat-heavy stuff, a lot of aggro-related stuff. Um, but I picked these three because they're kind of well-tuned against each other. They all require big creatures, so they take a little bit longer to get out. And then once they do, then you have, they, you know, kind of do monstrous things with, like, this dragon deck is all about trying to play a bunch of dragons each turn, if, if you possibly can, and each dragon that you play. So we're, we're dealing with Lathless, the dragon queen. So each time you play a dragon, you get another dragon, a free dragon <laughs> to to go with it, they're like uh, kind of couples, you know, like a married couple each time you play a dragon, it's it's a wife or husband comes out. So um, that's what we're gonna be doing today and uh, let's just go and get started, right? So with this dragon deck, I went ahead and took a hand um, that's kind of land heavy because dragons, they need a lot of land to get going. And not only that, but a single ramp card, which should help us get to a turn for um, Lathless, which is great because we could get, there are cards in here to get a little bit quicker, but mainly our goal here is that we're going to be playing these, uh, basically just playing a land each turn until we get to three to play that, and then we'll play the final mountain while we'll have six to be able to play Lathless. So getting started, we got another mountain, which is okay. We don't want to see too many more after this because... We want to be able to get up to eight mana, so here we have seven mana, so we want one more land ultimately to be able to play Odvara Hellkite, which is a really, really good dragon, and once we get it out, it's going to probably be game over. But waiting on that, so we really want more creatures or more ramp at this point, so we're going to go ahead and take our turn just playing Mountain and Passing after that, and we're going to pass to... Uh, angels, which angels, the sub theme here, so dragons, the theme is basically just dragons. <laughs> uh, they kind of burn everything in sight, but with angels, uh, this deck is a little bit more built around life gain. So we have, um, we have stuff like this guy, Bishop of Wings, which is why I decided to keep this hand. Uh, Bishop of Wings, whenever an angel enters a battlefield under your control, you gain four life. So that's really good. And then Whenever an angel you control dies, we get another uh, creature token, a smaller one, a little spirit. But even still, we got you know one more one more thing to help out with that. And 
part of the reason for that is that our commander here, Regina the Redeemer, or Regna the Redeemer. So at the beginning of each instep, if we gained a life, then we actually get two soldiers. And so essentially, we're going to be able to shore up our, our defenses by um, being able to gain life to stop the damage we take during combat, and then we're using that life to make more things each turn. So that's what we're going to be looking for, is trying to get that. Um, unfortunately, a lot of it's a little bit slower with angels because of their high converted, co co converted mana costs. It takes a while to get them out. So we're really banking on that life gain. So what we're going to try to set up here is we have Bishop of Wings and this Pearl Medallion for our turn two plays, possible turn two plays. And most likely what we'll do is we'll play Pearl Medallion because we don't know yet. We have a couple turns to get there, but we want to be able to play Mirror Entity after we play Bishop of Wings so that we can get that four life gain from Bishop of Wings. Um, and so the only way that we're going to do that unless we draw another land, which we should, hopefully, <laughs> if we don't get completely screwed there, um, is with Pearl Medallion because it reduces the cost of white cards. So let's go and draw our first card and see where we are. Ah, awesome. So at this point, we can actually forgo the Pearl Medallion plant. Because, well, at least for now, we can shelve it because we're, we're going to really be doing good with Mirror Entity um, on my, as our turn three play and Bishop of Wings as our turn two. So go ahead and play that planes and then pass it to the next turn. So after that, we got the fir fearsome and awful demon deck. And demons don't really play nicely with each other. They don't really like each other. They kind of just do their own thing, and that's about it. So what we're going to do here is ma our main goal is to try to get out our commander, Villas Broker of Blood, as soon as we can, because once we do... Whenever we lose life, we draw that many cards, and that's going to be a game breaker. The moment we get that, we'll, we'll be able to pile out our deck uh, rapid speed and hopefully have draw enough removal. And you can see I already started with one piece of removal. It's sometimes good to keep a lookout for that on your first turn, especially in Commander. Um, this is what we're going to be holding on to a while. Um, as Since we don't have any ramp in our hand, um, we have one creature, but it's not going to be very good until we can get some more cards into our graveyard. So for now, we're just going to bide our time and hope to get to six mana. And so once we get there on our sixth turn, we'll assess the board and see if we can just wipe the field of all of the opposing creatures while we have essentially nothing out. Uh, that's our main game plan right now. And then after we wipe the field, we'll see if we can get Phyllis out pretty quickly after that. Um, essentially because we'll be waiting two more turns. So hopefully by that, by turn six, we'll have gotten our ramp cards that we need to be able to get there. Um, our first play, or our first card is Bajuka Bog, which right now doesn't do us much good, and neither does this Mortuary Mire. Um, so what I'm going to do is, we don't want to wait too long. We Unfortunately, two of our lands now are lands that come into play tapped, so we don't really want to wait too long on those and we may just have to forgo the effects that they have um, and we could probably get away with that the white deck is probably the only one that we're really concerned about getting so Baju bajuga bog removes graveyards from from the game um, prevents them from being able to return stuff and white is generally the color for that or is one of the colors for that and so we'll, we'll have to keep an eye and see if they're really doing anything at least when we're evaluating what we see on the board right now Especially angels. There are some angels that do return stuff from the graveyard. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that and then move on and see, uh, you know, see if we can catch them off guard with it or if we just end up playing Bajuka Bog and wasting it or Mortuary Mire and wasting it for a turn so that we can get the land out and be able to untap with it. So for now, just the swamp and passing the turn. Returning now to dragons here we get oh man this is going to be so good it's this is this is it's going to it's going to be interesting to see how people deal with this because Cargan dragon lord is such a good card such such a good card and it makes a great turn to play here so i'm going to go and play the mountain 
pay two for its cost and go and cast Cargan Dragon Lord. So the idea here is that Cargan Dragon Lord, you pay mana into it to level it up and eat. Essentially, each time you level it up, it gets a little level counter to keep track of it. Um, and when you have four of those, when you level up, level it up four times, it becomes a four four flying, which is already pretty strong as early in the game as it's going to be. But then on top of that, if we can get it up to eight, which we should be able to do pretty much immediately the next turn, we'll get an eight eight flyer with trample and the ability to make itself stronger or at least deal more damage. So we're in the hot seat now with this because now that our opponents know, because we can't forgo this move, we have to, we really need to play it as soon as possible because it'll help us gain an advantage in the upcoming few turns. And by doing that, um, we, we put a target on our heads. And so hopefully nobody has any spot removal to get rid of it early. But even then we can kind of push out some of our opponents removal, hopefully, uh, you know, um, white has some really good removal. So if they have it, we may be able to have them play it on our Cargan Dragon Lord um, and thereby making it so that Lathless or one of the other dragons that we end up drawing, say, or Akvara Hellkite, we can go ahead and that removal won't be used on that one. So this this is a really good, this was a really, really good draw for the dragon deck here. Moving on back to Angels. Angels takes their turn drawing Throne of the High City, which isn't a bad card. Um, we're going to go ahead and keep it on our hand for now. It's, it's good that we're drawing some more mana. We're going to need that later on. For now, we're going to continue our plan. We're a little worried about the Cargan Dragon Lord, but all we can really do right now is just continue our plan with Bishop of Wings and hope that... Um, we can get enough mana to play Regina and ultimately play Safara Sky's Blade. So Safara Sky's Blade um, gives creatures I control with flying uh, indestructible, so they can't be destroyed, which means that we'll have a really good leg up on Cargan Dragon Lord later on. When, he, when he's really powerful, he's going to be trying to attack into creatures that are indestructible, so I won't lose anything and he will, which is a really good, really, really good news for us. So moving on to back to demons, draw land, that's good. And we're actually slowly making our way up. So right now I still have quite a number of lands here, I think I want to go ahead and get this Mortuary Mire out of the way first. Uh, we waste its effect, unfortunately, but the idea here is that by playing this now, we're, we're more concerned about being able to remove a graveyard than we are for returning a creature to our hand, and we're not going to have any creatures in our hand, really. We're going to look and see about playing this turn, f this card, Bloodspeaker, turn four, which what it does is it'll allow us to search our library for a demon card. Um, which will probably just be, um, it'll probably just block the Cargan Dragon Lord when we do that. I'll find one that I can actually play and save us one turn. So then I can, the sixth turn, so turn four will be this Blood Seeker speaker, and then turn five will be a demon that can block Cargan Dragon Lord or even remove Cargan Dragon Lord. We have a few demons that could probably do that. And then after that, um, turn six, we'll be looking at our Deadly Tempest and seeing if we need to wipe the field because we do have some creatures on the board that can become really scary if we allow them to stay on too long. Returning back to dragons, we're going to untap and draw. So we drew another mountain. It's not That's not really what we were looking for, but we have a really good... Uh, start with Cargan Dragon Lord. So what we're going to do is we didn't get removed by either deck. So, and white especially is tapped out. So that's really a really good sign that they don't have any removal in hand. And we can safely do this. We can play a mountain, pay three. So like I talked about before, this was my original plan when I didn't have anything else to do. But at this point, it's going to be safer now to go ahead and power up, level up Cargan Dragon Lord three times with this. They aren't quite there to the flying 4-4, but this way we will be able to 
be ready to level it up one more time and we're not wasting our mana. So the, the problem with leveling up, of course, is that each time you pay the mana to level up, you want to do it one at a time. I'm doing it all at once because I know that there's no removal. I mean, like, you know, I, I'm keeping that in mind, but generally speaking, when you do the level up, you want to do it one at a time because most likely they're going to kill you on one of the activations. Um, and so you want to be sure that you're not wasting mana if you could possibly help it. So at this point, we could attack, but right now we don't really want to make any enemies and make anybody mad at us. So we're actually going to hold back. Two damage isn't really that much in the grand scheme of things right now. And we're definitely going to be hitting it hard next turn. So coming back to... Angels will untap, draw a card. We got a Plains. That's really, really good to see because we're, we're really needing the mana. Um, Safara, unfortunately, the best way to play it is with a bunch of Flyers. We may not be able to see them. We may end up having to play it for, for its actual cost instead of its cheap cost. What its cheap cost is you pay a, a white and tap four untapped creatures you control with flying to cast it instead. But in this case, we may just end up casting it for its cost but for now what we're going to do is we're going to pay four or pay three i mean and we're going to go ahead and play mirror entity and what this does is it it puts some threat on the table for cargan for the dragon player because at this point what can happen is they don't know what i have in my hand they they i could have a man another land in my hand i could draw into another land and if that means what that means is that First, I'm gaining four life. Let's go ahead and do that, right? Let's go ahead and grab us a die over here. It's kind of far away. Um, let's go with let's go with blue. So we're going to gain four life here, and with this four life, we negate Cargan Dragon Lord's first attack. So if they attack us, we're kind of net even, really. And then not only that. But if they attack us, they're going to lose their positioning because they will be, they will have a tapped creature. They won't be able to block. And on our next turn, what we could do is we could play, we could end up playing another land and having four mana. And so what Mirror Entity does is that it counts as every creature type for, for one. So that's why it can actually activate um, Bishop of Wings. But its other ability is that you can pay any amount of mana and make all of your creatures that big. So right now, our Mirror Entity and our Bishop of Wings are 1-1 one, one, and 1-4 one, respectively. But with 4 mana, we can make them both 4-4s. Four, so Cargan Dragon Lord attacks for 4 damage. We essentially lose nothing because we already gained 4 life. And then our next turn, because he attacked us, we can attack him back for 8 damage. And he hasn't gained any life. So the dragon, the dragon deck is way behind, and we're going to be possibly getting another land the, the next turn after that, and then we're dealing 10 damage instead of 4 damage. So Cargan Dragon Lord probably will want to, at least for one turn, hold back on attacking because it's just a bad exchange. And by leaving a 4-4 blocker up, he could stop mirror entity from being able to deal damage and hopefully kill it so we kind of have created stalemate here with these two decks which brings us back to the demons and the demons are going to draw into exsanguinate so that's one of our big play cards later on we're going to want a lot of mana for this one it basically makes everybody else lose uh, the amount of life equal to what we pay for it and then we gain that much life as well so it really puts a lot of people behind if they're not careful so this card is our this is the card that we're going to save until the end of the game essentially and hope hopefully we don't want to play it to kind of save our skin if, we're, if we've lost too much life but we'll have to come to that so for now what we're going to do is we're going to go and play another swamp and pass so we look as innocuous as possible now that could still mean that the dragon deck or the white deck ends up attacking us. But for now, since we haven't done anything, we haven't posed a threat, there isn't much reason for us. And not only that, but with three mana up, we have access to a lot of the great black removal spells. So if somebody, we, we give the appearance that 
no, we don't have anything, but we could have something, and that's where we want to be right now with black, with this black deck, with, with the demons. Because like I said, our goal is to wait out as long as we can and then blast the field apart. So for now, that's all we're going to do. Going back to the dragon deck here, untap, draw a card. Okay, so we got another one of our ramp cards, and... It's possible we want to go ahead and play it, um, especially because of that over there. So we can we can still make we have enough way we have way way enough mana to be able to do what we want. Um, so most actually most likely what we're going to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna do this a little wonky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pay three to be able to get our worn power stone out. It comes to play tapped, which is unfortunate, but that's kind of how it has to be this turn and then our last mana again people are tapped out so we're kind of feel safe and putting carbon dragon lord up to a four so we ramped our mana giving us enough mana to be able to cast lathless next turn if we want to or if our carbon dragon lord gets removed we can also just play lathless instead of powering up cargan so that's our plan with dragons um let's look at angels here so let's untap draw a card oh that's good so let's see we aren't we can't block cargan dragon lord right now but we can still put up a front that we possibly could so most likely what we want to do with our hand here is we're still lacking on the mana to play these. We will be able to play Regina at some point. Um, and most likely what's going to happen with Regina is... So, so this is this is my thought here. We will play Castle Ardenvale, which is the land. Um, it would come to play tapped, but we control planes, so that's fine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pay two and cast Pearl Medallion here. And the idea is that right now... We have one, two, three, four, essentially five mana with this Pearl Medallion, which means that we have one more land. To, we, have, we have the land that we need to play to be able to cast Regina next turn. And then the turn after that, we will have Sephara, Sky's Blade, which will make flying things indestructible. And then the turn after that is Platinum Angel, which means its its ability is you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. So we'll have an indestructible Platinum Angel, which will make it very, very, very hard to be able to stop us without some kind of crazy removal or something like that. And we don't really know what they have. They could have the removal for both Sephara, Sky's Blade, and Platinum Angel, but they're going to have to have two pieces of remo removal to do it. The first one is only going to kill Sephara. So... We're looking, we're looking pretty good right now, I think. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and pass and do nothing else. We don't want, we don't, we want to leave up mana anyway, just so that it looks like we might have drawn removal. But for now, this is all we're going to do. We're not going to attack or anything like that. Moving on to back to demons, we drew reassembling skeleton. Um, so the reason why there's this skeleton in here is, unfortunately, most demons, there's not really enough low-cost demons to be able to, um, be able to have only demons in the deck. We, we put as many as we, th I, I put as many in here as I thought would make the deck work, and so I filled it in with little creatures that, um, do stuff like have the ability to sac, or like bring themselves back if they get sacrificed because there's a lot of demons that have sacrifice abilities. And I think we're going to go ahead and look for one now. So we're going to go ahead and play a swamp. We're going to pay four to cast Bloodseeker. And so Bloodseeker's ability um, is at the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice Bloodseeker. If you do, search your library for a demon card, reveal that card and put it into your hand and shuffle your library. So we're going to be looking at um, sacrificing that blood speaker at the beginning of an, our next upkeep and we have the five mana that we need to be able to cast a five cost demon if we need to and i'm thinking i'm pretty sure that we have demons that can kill off select creatures so that's probably what we're going to look for 
Um, going back to dragons here. Let's go ahead and untap, draw a card. Oh my gosh, Crucible of Fire, holy crap. So, yeah, I don't think he turns into a dragon. Some of the level up creatures gain creature types when they do that, but really what I think what we're going to do, we're gonna do is we're going to tap two to cast our Ruby Medallion. Then we're going to, like I said, we're going to pay one at a time, one, two, three, four, and put Cargan Dragon Lord up to eight. Um, and seeing as there's no responses at this point, I'll just go and grab one of these. So now we're at eight. So now we have an eight, eight flyer, which is really good for us. And I think that at this point, we will need to start attacking. There, there's a lot of damage that they can do over there, but we should be able to also do a lot of our own damage. And let's see, we had four lands last turn, so we can go ahead and play another one here. So next turn, using this mountain, so we can pay one red to make this guy one power stronger. So next turn, with this mana, we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll be able to do 14 damage with Cargan Dragon Lord next turn, which is more than what they will be able to deal um, in the, like, we're, we're going to start being able to really pounce on things quickly. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and attack here and pay one more because we're not using it anyway. So pay one more mana. And now we have, now we're dealing buying damage to them. So they will be only able to deal 10 damage if they attack. So that puts them in a hot spot where they have to waste all their mana to try to keep up with me or start playing something else. So that's what that's what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and get our nine damage in and then pass the turn so this deck took first blood and it's at 35 which is quite a bit of loss there and but the good thing is that we're going to make that up a little bit this turn so we drew angelic skirmisher which that's good that's a good one to have we're going to go and play our planes here, and we're going to go ahead and pay five to cast Regina. She usually costs six, but the Pearl Medallion reduces the cost. So we have an Angel coming into play, so we gain four life. Now we're back up to 39. And then we're going to pass the turn now. We'll actually... They're not doing anything. We can go ahead and get... It's, it's a measly bit of damage, but they're not going to be able to block or do much else this turn so we're going to go and deal two damage to the dragons and put them down to 38 and then at the end of the turn regina's effect happens at the beginning of each end step if you gain if your team gained life this turn create two white uh, warrior creatures we don't have warrior creatures right now as so i'm thinking that i need to find some more but thankfully there's not much synergy, actual synergy, or um, like cards that do stuff with warriors, so we're just going to use these white soldiers. So now we're really, really cooking. So if they attack again, they may deal 14 damage to us, but then we'll be able to turn around and we'll have six mana here next turn. And with six mana, we can make each of our creatures six sixes and deal 30 damage and almost wipe them out so we're we're really really good right now so passing the turn let's go to demons untap draw so we got oh wait sorry sorry we need to do our upkeep so our upkeep we sacrifice um blood speaker and we're going to find a demon so we're looking for something that's probably four four or five cost, something we can do something with, whether it's block or kill something. Um, so 
that we have a we have we have some good choices. Archfiend of Depravity is a really good choice here. Um, let's see. Man, it's, it's it's a little unfortunate. We'll have to get that blood speaker back. Right now, we there's a lot of good stuff, but not anything jumping out to me quite yet. We will we should find something. I'm pretty sure that there's um, something that um, kills creatures, and I'm thinking at this point we may just have to go with that one. Um, oh, here we go. So we, we were going to get it, but it was a little bit lower. Shadowborn Demon enters the battlefield, destroy target non-demon creature. So our choices here are Shadowborn Demon or Archfiend of Depravity. Now, the thing here is that Shadowborn Demon can definitely take care of Karg and Dragonlord, which would be good. We could do that. But... At the same time, Archfiend of Depravity really takes care of the Angel deck over there because it forces sacrificing every creature except for two. So they have five. They would have to sacrifice most of their creatures, which would mean that either they... Most likely, they would keep the Mirror Entity and the Angel. I'm not sure whether or not that helps us any because it could still mean really big creatures, but we do have the Wrath effect in our hand. So I think at this point, we really want to be able to target a specific creature. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the Shadowborn Demon. That's the one I was thinking that we had with Shadowborn Demon. Um, hang on a second here. We're getting a little dark on our stream. We need a little bit more light. Yeah, that looks a lot better. That's that's what I was looking for. Um, so what we're going to do with Shadowborn Demon is we're going to use it. We're going to go and cast it. It puts us back on a Wrath effect, but we're kind of okay with that because really our danger here is Mirror Entity. So if I do anything to the Angel deck, they're going to attack me, and they could attack me anyway just for being, you know, doing nothing, essentially. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm shuffling up here a little bit. We're taking this because what we're going to do is we're going to get on the dragon's good side by the dragon player is going to see us killing Mirror Entity and probably leave us alone. Uh, because we help them out, because really they're, they are the ones that are kind of going back and forth at the moment. Um, it also, doing this also means that the mirror entity can't turn around and kill, <laughs> pretty much kill us out of nowhere. So we got that, we draw a card for the turn. Well, black market, oh man. Oh man, oh man, I wish that we could set this up. Uh that's, we're gonna just have to hang on to that for now. So we're gonna play Hostile Desert. We're going to pay five and cast our Shadow Mord Demon. And when it comes into play, it's going to destroy target not, oh, non-demon, oh no. Um, unfortunately, Mirror, I, I just realized Mirror Entity is actually a demon because it's it's all creature types. That's unfortunate. Um, that is very unfortunate for me. So we can't do anything to that. Our best choice here than in that case so again we still want to stay on the good side of um, the good side of the dragons, I think. 
Well, actually, let me think about this. So, maybe what we do is we go ahead and kill the... We could hedge our bets here. So, because we can't kill Mirror Entity, because that's my first choice by far. So, I think maybe what we do is we kill the dragons and get on the good side of the angels. And in that way, we can do this Deadly Tempest when we want to. And maybe save ourselves a little bit of heartache. So, so yeah. So, that's what I'm going to do um, at the beginning. So, whenever a demon comes into play. So, that's, that's our first trigger. We actually have a second trigger here. So, whenever a demon comes into play under your control, return it to your, from your graveyard to your hand. What we're going to actually do is we're not. Let's see, unless it says... Okay, so it is a must. We have to return it. So we're going to go ahead and return Bloodspeaker to our hand. What I was going to do is that we do have another demon in our hand already that cares about the cost of things. So we're going to... Our, our goal here, so our, our game plan, we kill the dragon. The next turn, we play Bajukabog, exiling a graveyard. We have to play it into play tapped. So unless we draw another land, that's going to be this is going to be what we do. We play that, put that play tapped. We play Black Market, which puts us really in the spotlight. So hopefully somebody doesn't have removal. Specifically, the white deck. The white deck is pretty much the only thing that can destroy artifacts and enchantments right now. Well, I mean um, enchantments. And then if we get away one turn without dying with that, then the next turn we'll play De Deadly Tempest, which will get us black market really high. Um, because at each time a creature... Basically, it'll make it so that for every creature that dies, we'll be able to get a mana every for that many creatures every turn from now on. So we really want that out when we do the... Wrath, but unfortunately we won't be able to play both. So so we're going to keep these in our hand. We have seven, so we don't have to discard. So we have demon. This demon is going to sacrifice at the beginning of my next upkeep, unfortunately, because I don't have enough creatures in my graveyard, but that's okay. So next turn here. This guy's dead. We... We saw that, so we've we've lost him, unfortunately. But we have so much mana to play with, and we just... I really... I don't know that I really like having even more mana, but it's just going to have to be how it is. So we play that. Let's see how much mana that we really have right now, because we may be able to do something really crazy here. Um, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 mana. So we need 5 mana to be able to catch cast Lathless. So that's the 5 mana that we have right there. But we also have this Crucible of Fire, which is so good. Dragon creatures you control get plus 3, plus 3. So we'll have a 9-9 nine, nine Lathless if we do this. And since Crucible of Fire's cost is reduced as well with Ruby Medallion, so first we pay 3 mana, we get Crucible of Fire. Then we pay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 mana. And the 6 mana is reduced for Lathless, so now we get our Commander out. And that's... Uh, Second player to play our commander. So now we have a 9-9 flyer and we can do some solid blocking if the if our angel friend over there um, decides to try to attack us. So thankfully we'll at least not die from this. Uh, with with having by having this out, we can hopefully negate a bit of the damage that we might be taking. Um, and the next turn, our, our play essentially at this point is our next turn will be Edvar Helkai because we have enough mana. So that's that's what we're looking for. Hopefully, 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 hopefully we can get there. Okay, so angels, we untap. We haven't gained any more life since then. So each of the other turns, we could technically end up getting more soldiers, but we don't have the cards to do it yet. So let's go ahead and draw a card. Go ahead and play our Throne of the High City. Hmm. So I think... I think our play is to go ahead and play Safara Sky's Blade. It's, it's a lot of mana to, to, to cast, but we really don't have the flying creatures to reduce it 
yet. So when we play it, we're going to gain four life, and now we're back up to 43. See how good this is? We just we just renegated all of the damage that we took before, and now we also have an indestructible flyer, so that's awesome. So our indestructible flyer, we could attack with it, um, but it's not going to be killing anything right now. So we don't want to worry too much about that. I think we're just going to shore up for the rest of the turn because next turn, like I said, will be Pal uh, Platinum Angel and we'll be cooking with gas, as they say. So let's see. I need... I ended my turn, I gained life, so I get two more soldiers from that. And there is a there is a reason for these soldiers. We may not see it this game, but there is a reason for making these soldiers. Because not only does it gain us life, but it is possible that we may be making angels instead of soldiers sometime later. So let's just go ahead and pass and see what happens. Okay, it's the demon's turn. The upkeep. Unfortunately, we have to sacrifice our Shadowborn Demon. Untap, draw a card. So, this is a little bad. We are really, really, really concerned about what's going on, and there's not much that we can really do about it. Because So, here's, here's the thing that I'm looking at. They have... Six mana. Let's see. Make sure. Count the angels land again. So three and six. Yes. So they have six mana. They also have eight creatures. So that's more. That's 48 damage if they decide to do something about that. It's enough to take somebody out. And since we didn't draw any land or any other ability, any other, other way to make mana, we can't play Deadly Tempest this turn. So we can't wipe the field. And if we play Black Market, the white deck will almost certainly kill us. So we can't play that either. So we only have five mana. Most likely, I think, what we want to do is... We have to hold these back. We're going to play... We're almost certainly going to play Deadly Tempest next turn. Let's go ahead and play Bajugabog. That'll set us up for that. It'll erase the Dragon Deck's graveyard because it's the only graveyard with anything in it. So we have, we're, I mean, it just makes sense to go ahead and pick it. We're going to go ahead and pay two to cast Reassembling Skeleton and then another three to cast Curse of Shallow Graves. So it has Enchant Player. Whenever a player attacks Enchanted Player with one or more creatures, that attacking player may put a 2-2 Black Zombie creature token onto the battlefield tapped. We are going to choose... Let's think about this. Again, the... The Angel deck is still capable of killing us next turn, even if we have one blocker. So I think what we want to do is go ahead and place Curse of Shallow Graves on the Dragon deck. And the reason for that, like I said, we what, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get rid of cards in my hand so it looks like I'm, like I'm doing something. I'm not like completely stuck, but I'm just kind of struggling. I, at this point, I didn't remove any other creatures except for the one. So it's obvious that I'm just really far behind compared to the other players that had ramp. So both the other decks found their ramp cards. I did not, so I'm not going quite as fast. So I just, I need to keep my head down one more turn so I can play Deadly Tempest and get us back on track. So Deadly Tempest right here is going to play our control deck <laughs> for the moment. Um, and that's kind of the backside of this demon deck is kind of drawing lots of cards so that you can get into cards that do removal and then find enough powerful things to win the game. So we are still kind of a control deck with this, with this mono black demon deck, but I don't know, we'll see. So let's go ahead and pass to the dragons. So the dragons, they don't know anything about this. All they see is mirror entity screaming in our face 
and that's that's kind of a big problem here. So we gotta we're gonna need to do something about that. So we draw a card, Sunbird's Invocation. Unfortunately, we can't play it and put Far Hellkite at the same time, and we really need to do something about these gosh darn angels. So let's see how much mana we have. We have how much do we need for Far Hellkite? We need eight. So one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven. So uh, our cost is reduced by one. So it's looking like we just have one mana up for Lathless. So what's going to happen is I cast Advar Hellkite. And because I did that, um, Lathless, whenever a non token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, you create a 5 5 dragon. So we get another dragon here. Then, let's see, after we do that, we are going to declare attackers. So the reason for this is I know that there's nothing I can do against the angel deck, but if I attack here, Utvar Hellkite, what it does is whenever dragon you control attacks, create a 6-6 six, six dragon creature token with flying. So we're gonna get another dragon. And it's not a 6-6 six, six right now, it's actually a 9-9. Nine, nine. So the angel deck is going to block. So the angel deck plays defense this turn. And because the angel deck has, um, has an indestructible flyer, it's going to go ahead and block. There's no trample, so none of the damage goes through. But now there's three blockers for the dragon deck to my creature. So this... This isn't a rough spot, but we are looking like we need to figure out what we're going to do. So untap, upkeep, draw, karmic guide. That's a good, that's good, 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 good angel. So we could go alpha strike. So let's, let's calculate what an alpha strike would look like. So if we did all six mana into these, into our creatures, they would all be six sixes with all creature types, which um, it's only creatures with flying are indestructible. So most likely one of them's going, one of the dragons is going to block Safara to make, to get rid of the indestructibility. Another one is probably going to block the mirror entity. And then the third is going to block Regina because they're, all of the dragons are going to survive. So we got, we got three blockers here. What gets through? We have five six sixes that gets through that's 30 damage that that's that's a lot of damage it puts it down to eight but we lose our mirror entity we lose our indestructibility and we don't get much else out of it and they still have dragons and they're going to each attack next turn and make four more six six dragons that's bad news bears uh really the thing that we need to do to save us at this point is we need to just go ahead and play the platinum angel it gives us another indestructible blocker, and it also means that no matter what they do, no matter how much damage they deal to us, it doesn't matter as long as we can keep out the Platinum Angel. So we want to keep saving this Platinum Angel for as long as we possibly can. And that's our turn for now. Unfortunately, there's not much else that we can do. We just have to hope that, <laughs> that the Platinum Angel doesn't get removed after having the destructibility. So, untap with the demons draw a card land oh man that's cool i mean it's several turns late at this point but at least we got a land so we have a land here unfortunately we just we don't have enough to do everything that we want to which ideally would be black market plus deadly tempest so this turn all we're going to do is we're going to pay our six mana and we're going to cast Deadly Tempest. So destroy all creatures. Each player loses life equal to number of creatures he or she controlled that were destroyed this way. Oh, and before I completely forget, Platinum Angel is an angel. So when it came into play, it gave us four more life. So we're at 47. And not only that, but when we ended our turn, we got two more soldiers here. Again, really good. Really good with this mirror entity. Okay. So, let's look at this again. Deadly Tempest. So, when demons 
creatures get destroyed with Deadly Tempest. Only one gets destroyed, so we lose one life. Let's go ahead and look at the dragons. So the dragons had four creatures. Each of them died. So our Lathless is going to go back into the command zone. So we don't have a way to return it right now. And then we lose these two token dragons, unfortunately. So we actually lose four life and we're down to 34. Looking now at the angels, we are going to keep our two, our Regina and Platinum Angel, but unfortunately it loses life equal to the number of creatures he or she controlled that were destroyed this way. So these two aren't going to count in our count, but Safara, Mirror Entity, Bishop of Wings, and each of these tokens are all going to die. One, two, three, four, five, six seven eight and nine so we're gonna lose nine life jeez and be down to 38 wow we we tried to gain a lot but then we just we're just lo losing all of it so we're we're quite behind so is the so is the dragon deck the dragon deck lost a lot but thankfully we have a hidden card in our hand when it gets back around to our turn we're going to take a look at it but for now it's just the demon's turn the demons did that. I think that's probably all they're going to do this turn because they don't really have the mana to do much else right now. We're going to be able to get a, a, a little flying death touch next turn if we want. But for now, that's all we're going to be able to do. That's all she wrote. So let's go back to dragons. Wow, rough, very rough. Untap, draw a card, honor, the god pharaoh okay so let's go ahead and play the land that we have and let's see how much mana we're really looking at because we may we may take a turn off to set up what we want to do so one two three four five six seven eight nine mana which is enough to recast lathless here but we really don't want to yet what we want to do instead is hold, wait let's see so one two three four five so our cost is reduced by one for Sunbird's Invocation. So what Sunbird's Invocation does is that whenever I cast a spell from my hand, I reveal cards off the top of my library, where X is that spell, I reveal X, spell, X cards off my library. And then I can cast anything that costs less than the card that I cast. So so we're gonna we're gonna go and show how that works right now. Right right now we really I think we wanna find out how much more cards we have or we want to increase the number of cards in our hand but i'm thinking actually i know what dragons we have in the deck and that's what this one does it search so we, so we have two choices we can either search for a dragon and get it for sure or we can draw two cards for sure and we may be able to draw two cards later on so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pay two to cast Sarkin's Triumph. So since I cast a spell from my hand, Sunbird's Invocation activates, and I reveal three cards from the top of my library. So it was Dragon Speaker Shaman and two Mountains. You may cast a card revealed this way with converted mana cost X or less without paying its mana cost. So since it was three, I can cast three or less. So I get to cast Dragon Speaker Shaman. And then put the bottom the bottom two on my library in a random order. They're both mountains, so it doesn't really matter on the randomization. And then we get the effect of Sarkin's Triumph. So we get to look for a dragon. Um, we have oh we have we have so many good choices here. So so many good choices. And I. think think I, I had an idea about what I wanted to get and now I'm now I'm rethinking that because because I think I found the I think I found the card that I want to get now. And I'm not really seeing any reason why I shouldn't get it. So the the card I was thinking about getting is this Archwing Dragon. The idea being that it's it's a low cost dragon and at the end of your turn you return it to your hand. And what the reason why that's good is because Lathless, you know, makes a dragon every time you play a dragon. So Archwing, you keep getting able to replay it over and over again. But right now, 
I think the idea here is I'm not seeing. Yeah, I think the best one. I think I think it's this one, Bill Fire Dragon. It has. Well, let's just wait. Let's just wait a little bit. If you don't know, if you don't know, then let's just wait a little bit. See what see what happens. That that seems probably the best one, and we'll get back to back to that here shortly. Uh, the the good thing about we got really lucky on the Dragon Speaker Shaman uh, being on top. So Dragon Speaker Shaman reduces the cost of Dragon spells by two. So we're we're looking really really fine right now. Uh, the thing about, of course, with Sarkin's Triumph is that we do have to reveal it to put it into our hand. So everybody knows. I guess I can't. Uh, everybody, all the players at the table would know and they would be very afraid and maybe somebody would start crying. But all we're going to do is just put it into our hand and leave it a mystery for now. Uh, let's see. Um that Balefire Dragon into Balefire Dragon into our hand and we will pass the turn because we don't want to we don't want to play honor the god favor right now so we're just gonna pass okay angel deck very afraid very very afraid or should be except that oh we get another mana that's good too so we're going to go and play that let's see we have seven mana to deal with so Here's the cool thing. The cool thing, I, I said that we had a card in our hand that was going to really turn things around for us. So the Demon Jet tried to put us out of our, or tried to shut us down with all of our creatures. Unfortunately for them, they wasted their Bajookabog a little bit too early. And what we're going to do is first, we're going to play Karmic Guide. Karmic Guide is a well-known old magic card that has been around for quite some time. It's a 2-2, so it's not very strong, but it has flying protection from black, which is really good since we have a black demon deck here. And whenever it comes into play, you choose target creature card in your graveyard and put that creature into play. Well, guess what? Return Sephara Sky's Blade. So now our angels are indestructible once more. And then we'll pay three more and play another angel, a 3-3 with Flying and Vigilance. Which, again, not very strong. There's Some of the angels are not very strong in this deck. But the idea here is that we have a bunch of indestructible blockers, essentially. Uh, Sephara, Sky's Blade may not be long for this world, but hopefully what we can do is the next turn we'll play this Angelic Skirmisher and see what happens. Go ahead and pass. We're still shy mana that we need. Um, we only have seven, we need more. That's not it, unfortunately. So what we're going to do here is, we still don't, we don't even have enough mana to do everything that I would like. It's unfortunate. Let's see. Hmm. Not good, not good, not good, not good. We can play both of these this turn, and that may be what we go ahead and do. Go and play just two creatures out. It's all of our mana, seven. So we get the ability to search for another demon, which I think we're going to just absolutely have to do. And then embodiment of agonies when it comes into play you get a, it gets a plus one plus one counter it enters with a plus one plus one counter for each different mana cost of non-lane cards in your graveyard so we have five cost two cost and six cost so it gets three plus one plus one counters which isn't a lot but it has death touch so hopefully we can make good use of the death touch when somebody comes to try to attack us so let's go ahead and pass and see what the dra the dragons the draggy drags can do. So untap, upkeep, draw card. We got reverberate. Ooh, interesting. Hmm. 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 Okay. So how much mana do we have? We need. So lathless is so much. And it's. Still, it's probably what we need to go ahead and play. 
So nor so right now its cost is reduced by three. So it normally costs just three mana, but because unfortunately we uh, we have to pay two extra to recast it. So that means that we have to pay these three. So it so it's normally six. It's reduced by three plus let's see plus two more. Hmm, let me think about that. Um, three, four, five. So that's our four, this is five, to be able to cast Lathless. So Sunbird's Invocation happens again. So we cast Lathless, we look at the, we reveal the top six cards of our library. So we've got Dragon Roost, Mountain, Moonvale Dragon, Bogarden Hellkite, our Grixmas 2017, Territorial Hellkite, and a Mountain. So, out of these guys, really the only ones that we can do anything with is Moonvale Dragon and Territorial Hellkite. Um, between the two, Territorial Hellkite would be really good. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering if I should go ahead, but it, the thing is I don't know that I necessarily want to attack right this second. I think what I want to do is go ahead and put Moonvale Dragon out. What its capability is, is that you pay a mana and it boosts everything that you have. So let's go ahead and randomize these a little bit. Put them on the bottom. And then we get Lathless. So Moonvale Dragon comes out before Lathless, but that's okay. Um, and now we're looking at the rest of our hand. So we have things reduced by three mana here, all of our dragons. So I think we get to play the Almighty. So this is four, Balefire Dragon costs seven normally, it's down by three, so only four mana to cast Balefire Dragon. Before we get there, Sunbird's Invocation happens. So we look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We get to choose something that costs seven or less so let's see we can do we can actually do any one of these if we want to but most likely what we want to do is hmm. now ancient hellkai would be really really good if we were attacking the into the um, embodiment of agonies because we could we could kill it before it kills one of our dragons, but right now what we really want to do is probably get this Hellkite Charger out there. So Hellkite Charger enters the battlefield because I cast it, and because a dragon entered the battlefield under my control, I get a free dragon. So here's my 5-5, five, five, technically 8-8 eight, eight dragon. Let's go ahead and put these on the bottom. Then we get Balefire Dragon comes into play. We get another dragon. See how crazy this is? This is just bananas. Another 5-5 five, five dragon. Um, put this other dragon away. We're probably not going to get Ivar Hellkite back, unfortunately. So, Balefire Dragon. The reason that this dragon is so good is that whenever it deals combat damage to a player, it deals that much damage to each creature that player controls. Which means that, essentially at this point, you have to make sure that you block it. Because I'll just destroy everything on your field if you don't. Mm. I had to take a small sip there. So now we're looking super good. We're looking sweet. Um, we don't have any mana... And we can't do much on the attacking side of things, but let's see. We paid Lathless and Balefire Dragon. We technically could attack with Hellkite Charger because that is haste, but most likely we're just going to hold off one turn. So what Hellkite Charger does is that whenever it attacks, you can pay seven mana and untap all attacking creatures you control and get an additional combat. So we're really going to use that next turn. We're going to totally destroy somebody next turn. Somebody's going to be put in really tough positions. Okay, untap. Draw a card. Oh, oh, this couldn't have come at a better time. I'm serious here. So we're going to pay some mana 
two mana. It normally costs three, but we have Pearl Medallion. So we're going to cast Solemn Offering. Destroy target artifact or enchantment and gain four life. So we're going to destroy the Crucible of Fire. That's really what our where we're going to get in trouble because it's giving plus three, plus three to all dragons, making all these things. I mean, they're already big. They're just even bigger. We can't afford that. We have to do that. Then our next play is to pay five. Normally it's six, but now we have Angelic Skirmisher. So at the beginning of each combat, I choose First Strike, Vigilance, or Lifelink. Creatures I control gain creatures I control gain that ability until end of turn. So here's what I'm gonna do. That demon deck over there, they've been going on too long without getting messed with. I mean it's just that's how it is. So I have a bunch of indestructible already, except for Safara. So I don't want to attack with that. So she's going to come back here a little bit. And Angelic Skirmisher can't attack this turn. So we're left with these guys here. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to enter into combat. In the beginning of our combat, we're going to choose an ability. We're going to choose Vigilance, which means that our creatures don't tap whenever they attack. We're going to attack with all four of these creatures against the demon deck for being such a prick all the time. <laughs> oh, darn it. Uh, I forgot there's one other ability with Karmic Guide. It, if I don't pay an upkeep cost, it dies. It's better that I don't. I was kind of planning on letting it die anyway. So here we go. We're going to attack this way towards the demon deck. They're tapped out. It's unlikely that they have much that they can do about it. So the demon deck is going to have to choose about blocking. And right now it really needs, like I'm not dealing much damage. I'm dealing 11 damage. But the dragon deck can deal so much more and it would be much more painful for it, especially since it can't kill any of my creatures, that I would lose the embodiment of agonies and gain nothing, essentially. <laughs> so I'm as as far as the demon deck is concerned, the demon deck is going to go ahead and take that damage. It's going to take 11 damage and be down to 28 life. So we're not looking... We're, we're not... We're not looking too hot here. Um, and then the Angel deck finishes its combat and will end the turn by... Let's see. Did I gain... No, I didn't gain life this turn. No, I did. I did. I gained four life. I just forgot to count it. So I'm actually up here to 22. Or I mean 42. Uh, and then because I gained life, I get two soldiers again, which they don't, they don't do much, but that's okay. That's okay. They're cute. Let's look at demons. Demons, man. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to figure it out here. So, untap, upkeep. So I would sacrifice Bloodspeaker, but unfortunately there's just like not a lot of reason to, to do that right now. Which is unfortunate because, yeah, I really need to do something. I really need to get mana. I really need to get out Villas so we can start trucking along. So I'm hoping that this card will be a land or ramp of some kind so that we can start working on that. Because we're in a lot of hurt. We have no defense. We can't do much about the, the dragons over there. Oh, thank goodness. Dunes of the Dead. Thank goodness. We actually do have a oh man, that's so good. That's so so good. That's going to be that's going to help out a lot because this is what we're gonna do. Hopefully we don't die, but now we get Villas, Broker of Blood out. Eight eight flying, pay one black and two life. Target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. So right now what this means is that we have pay a black, draw a card, lose two life, and possibly kill something we don't know what yet but we'll have to see because hopefully the dragon deck so right now the angel deck can do a lot of the blocking of the dragons and possibly make it really difficult to do much especially because each combat the angel deck can choose to have lifelink and then basically whatever damage goes through gets negated 
basically because they have lifelink and then they get two more creatures. So it just, it's going to compound sooner or later. It's going to be really good. So they probably don't want to, it. they need me to help them get rid of Sephara and or also Platinum Angel at this point. So hopefully the dragons won't attack me. I guess we'll find out. So let's go ahead and look at the dragons again. We're going to untap, keep draw a card. What's our card? Urobrosk the Hidden. Ooh. 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 So good. Um, so good because it gives us haste and makes all of our opponent's creatures come to play tapped. Now it's a little late for that right now. But most likely what we're going to do is I think we're going to go ahead and cast it. So it would cost five. So here's our four to be able to cast Urobrask. But before we do that, we get Sunbird's Invocation. So we look at the top five. Here's one, two, three, four, five. Let's look and see what we got. Oh, wow. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is a play. We get Archfiend Dragon, which we thought about searching for before, and thankfully it floated up to the top here. So now we get to shuffle up. Urobrosk comes in. Well, first we get another 5-5 five, five Dragon. Urobrosk comes into play, gives everything haste. <laughs> you see how freaking crazy this gets um hellkite charger unfortunately we're leaving it alone for now um we're not going to be using its ability we, all of our stuff is lower now but maybe that's okay maybe it's okay if we have it like that so the highest Thing they have a Safara with seven power, so they could do something about that, but unfortunately for them, I do have Moonveil Dragon, so I can I have plenty of mana to kill something. So most likely what we're going to do here is we'll hold back Hellkite Charger. We'll hold back Dragon Speaker Shaman. And we're going to we have to we have to start making plays here, and our play is to just go ham at the other at the angel deck this turn. So this is what we're doing. This guy going to hold him back as well. So we have a lot of damage coming in. So the angel deck can block. Five of them. Uh, so let's see. At the beginning of combat, most likely the angels would choose lifelink because it's going to negate some of the damage. And that's with the angelic skirmisher. I don't know if you if you don't remember. I'm I'm looking at the at the board here. So we have the angelic skirmisher there to be able to choose at the beginning of combat first strike vigilance lifelink. So we don't really have anything big enough to to first strike kill a lot of these dragons. So instead, we're choosing Lifelink because we have a Destructible. Let's see. We definitely need to block the Balefire Dragon. So that's one of them. Then we need to block... Uh, let's see. Can we make any kills? Because I think that we're... N I think with our Lifelink, we can help mitigate some of this. So, yeah, I think that we want to, oh man, let's see. So if we double block twice, and kill Lathless, what are we looking at? So we'd be looking at um, 15, 22 damage possibly another 
25 on top of that, 22, 25, 47. So that's not good. We can't do that. So we can, what if we double block once? Do it like this. So then that ends up being 18 damage with a possible 38 damage. And then we gain back eight, um, 15, 38. So 13, we take 13 damage overall. That's not too bad. I think that would, I think that that's what we do. So we let this many through. We double block Balefire Dragon to make sure to kill it. And then these other two just get regular blocked. So we lose 13 life and kill Balefire Dragon. And that's that's okay. It's not ideal, but unfortunately that's kind of how it is. We just got unlucky this time. So 13 damage. We go over here. Two, 11 more. So that puts us at 29. And then here, funny enough, because we gained life on somebody else's turn, we actually get more, two more soldiers. <laughs> And we lose nothing. So, and see, the re part of the reason that I'm going ahead and blocking is I could just take all the tank all of the damage to my face, <laughs> um, and just have Platinum Angel save me. But it still means that I'm two removal away from dying, and I don't know what that's going to look like. So I draw a card for the turn. Oh, that's a good card. Nobody's going to be able to do anything about it. Um, hmm. Interesting. Villas is the problem. So I just took a bunch, a bundle from the dragons, but I'm still kind of sitting really pretty here. And it's like, it's possible that no matter what they do, they're going to have some trouble getting back to get, being it. I'm going to be able to slowly pick them apart, hopefully. Now, the Hokai Charger is a problem as well. I think, so, okay, so the card that I drew is Oblivion Ring. Oblivion Ring, what it does is it allows me to exile one card. So I can get rid of Villas, which prevents Villas from being able to do much against me. Um, let's see. I can exile Villas to prevent it from exiling all of my creatures all the time. Or not exiling, killing my creatures all the time. Um... Or I can get rid of Hellkite Charger, because Hellkite Charger gives multiple attack phases, which is bad news for me. I may die from that. So. Let's see here. I think maybe the play is I go ahead and pay the two to play Oblivion Ring, and I'm going to go ahead and exile Villas. I think that's what I do. So Villas is now exiled. They're going to choose, the demon player is going to choose to put it into the command zone. So now the, the demon deck has to get two more mana to be able to recast Phyllis. And then I'm going to go to combat. I'm going to choose Vigilance. So each of my creatures can, do have Vigilance. The demon deck is tapped out. So I'm going to attack dragons here. And then my other play is to pay three. And as I attack with Angel of Condemnation, I'm going to pay three to tap it and exert it. So what exert means is that I won't untap during my next untap step, which is fine because what I'm going to do is I'm going to exile another target creature until it leaves the battlefield. So I'm going to exile Hellkite Charger from the game until Angel of Condemnation goes away. 
so now I, let's see, I'm attacking with those and I'm gonna go, my, my soldiers aren't doing much else right now. So I'm going to go ahead and attack my soldiers as well. And that means that I also get a two, two zombie. Let's see, do we have, even have zombies over here? I don't think so. Hey, hang on a second. Let me go, let me go grab a zombie because we need, we need that zombie card. I know I have a zombie somewhere in here. Let's see. Oh, that's that. That's a big zombie. <laughs> I have a zombie. I have a zombie giant. A five five. It's not quite what I wanted. Oh come on! There's gotta be okay. Um, is that all the zombies that I have? Okay, yeah. Let's just go ahead and do that. I have. I attacked, and because of. Curse of Shallow Graves, I get a little 2-2 zombie into play. Let's see. So what's going to happen is the dragon deck is going to block two of the soldiers because unfortunately they can't block any of the flyers. So two of the soldiers are going to die and what we have left is a total of 1, 2, 10, um, 21 damage. Wow, that's a lot. That's a good number. A solid number there. So 21 damage. That's 14, 7 more. So we're down to 13 life. Ouch. We're, we're kind of, we're, we're not looking so good here. We're not, we're going to, Dragon Deck, Dragon Deck's going to have to make a move if they're going to want to stay in the game. So we're looking okay with the angels i think i think that's what we're, we lost one of our indestructible blockers but we're kind of okay with that because um thankfully we we got we got another guy to play with we're probably going to choose lifelink again they're going to try to deal a lot of damage we're just going to block as much as we can damage wise and then we're set up again to be able to attack, swing into something. So the dragon deck's gonna have to figure out if they can, you know, stop me from killing them because my vigilance and lifelink combo here with angelic skirmisher and safari skyblade, as well as Regina, kind of helping keep things in there. That's that's going to win the game for me as long as the demon deck doesn't pull something else out either. <laughs> I guess we'll find out here in a little bit. So let's see. Untap, upkeep, draw, uh, actually, see, and I think here, this is now the point where we need to go and sacrifice the blood speaker and find another demon to do something with because we just can't keep not doing stuff. And I think that means we get... Where is it? Um, do, 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 I don't think that does enough, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and, oh man. And I think that that is. I could be the the one, but I think that. Let's see. Sorry, I'm I'm trying to think of. I think we I think we need to choose Archfiend of Depravity. I think that's that's our play is Archfiend of Depravity.
And what it does is that at the beginning of each opponent's instep, they choose up to two creatures they control and sacrifice the rest. So our goal here is to try to force loss of creatures. I don't I don't know that there's any other good 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 thing to do here. Um, there are other good demons in the deck, but not necessarily ones that are especially strong. So we're just kind of hoping that we can coast by and maybe somebody will try to destroy Archfiend of Depravity. Let's see, Liliana's Contract. Oh, interesting. What do we, what do we have? Okay, huh, huh. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and play Archfiend of Depravity, which brings Blood Speaker back to my hand. I don't really have anything else that I can do right now. I'm just gonna have to pass and see how it plays. I'm I'm not sure what's going to happen. I drew I drew a card that could really change the game for me, but unfortunately I don't know if it's going to work out or not. Because it's just, it's like, you know, like, big risk, big reward if I can get it to work. But right now it's not looking so hot, so I'm just going to do Archfiend of Depravity and call it good. So, Dragon's turn. Untap, 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 untap. Oh, and Archfiend of Depravity came into play tapped as well. Oops. Oh, that sucks. That's even more precarious. Okay, untap, draw a card. Pyroblast, completely useless this game. <laughs> Actually, no, I guess not right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if we can't get something off the top of our deck that might help us out here. We, we're like, so we're kind of, angels are putting us in a bad spot. So we're gonna go ahead and cast Honor the God Pharaoh and it to be able to cast it, I have to discard a card. So I'll discard the useless card. I look at the top three. Is there anything that costs three or less? Um, yes, so Sarkin Fireblood is a Planeswalker. We're gonna go ahead and play that. This is about as randomized as I can possibly get with just two cards. So then I draw two cards and get a zero, zero zombie with a plus one, plus one counter. So, Let's see. Um, I think I saw one here just a second ago. The the you know, a mass ability is not really meant to be like used for much. <laughs> yeah, this one is it's in Japanese, but that's okay. So it's a zero one zombie or zero zero zombie, and it comes into play with a plus one plus one counter. Okay. Now the cards that we drew in our hand don't help us out too much, unfortunately. So let's see. How much damage can we deal, really? Realistically. These two aren't going to help me out. They can attack, but I guess... I guess they can. It would force loss of the soldiers, right? Okay, so that's okay. They, they don't deal any damage, but that's okay. Um, then we have all these... Oh, crap. This is returned to my hand. At the beginning of my... Uh, or at the beginning of my end step, this returned to my hand. So we're definitely going to recast it. It's reduced a lot. So we get Archfiend... Archwing Dragon. So we get to do... This first, let's look at the top four cards. Anything four or less, Soul Ring is four or less. We're going to go ahead and cast it. Unfortunately, not a dragon. There's not really any dragons that we can hope to possibly get at this point, but not with four mana. But we get that, and then we get another dragon. So we get a 5-5 five, five dragon here, and thankfully it has haste, so that's good. Um... Let's see, is there anything we can do with Sarkin? 
Yes. So let's go ahead and put Sarkin up from three to four. And discard a card. I'm going to go ahead and discard Semblance Anvil. So we don't really need more Dragon Ramp right now. If I do, I draw a card. Not what we were looking for. Let's go ahead and play a land for the turn. Okay, sorry. So these aren't really tapped. I was just looking at attacking here. Let's see. Hmm. So, three blockers for sure. They're almost certainly going to block the biggest things, and that's going to be Lathless, Moonville Dragon, and a 5-5 and a five five Dragon. So base attack, what we're looking at is um, 19 damage. We can get an additional for sure. Let's see. Dragons you control. Creatures I control. Okay. So this stuff, these worn power stone and soul ring, unfortunately didn't do us much good. So we can get another 16 damage in there with these with this four mana. So 1630, um, sorry, 16 plus 1935, which is more than they have, but they will be gaining 1, 2, 10, 14, so 35, 21. So that's not enough to kill them this turn, unfortunately, and I don't know that it's worth attacking unless I can guarantee that. Because I don't want them, essentially I don't want them to gain more life and I definitely don't want them attacking me. So I think this turn we just have to say, we're in the turn by returning these to my hand, or returning Archwing Dragon back to my hand and calling it good and just playing blockers for now, which is not ideal. We need to be attacking as much as we can. So untap, untap. We could technically, oh, so Angel of Condemnation was super tapped last turn, now it's just regular tapped, so to speak. Um, untap, draw a card. Valkyrie Harbinger. Harbinger. Let's see. Oh man, that's so good. It's so, so good. So, so good. Unfortunately, we're. Oh man, we could we? Oh, that's oh man, that's that's really good. Okay, so we have we have this Valkyrie Harbring Harbringer. Going to go ahead and cast it. Flying lifelink at the beginning of each in step. If you gained four more life this turn, create a four four. White Angel Creature Token with Flying and Vigilance. It comes into play tapped because of Urobrosk. So, what we're going to try to do is we're actually going to look into gaining for life. So, we don't have anything else with Vigilance. We really need to choose Lifelink. So, what we're going to do is we're going to attack the Demon deck, actually. Um, mainly because we want to save our creatures as much as possible, but we're going to choose lifelink this turn. So this is four damage. So unless they can remove one of those creatures... Oh, 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 crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. We have to undo this. We have to undo this. We have to start back from what we were doing before. We forgot one thing. We forgot the, what the demon deck was doing over there. We forgot about sacrificing crap so we actually do need to attack this turn and what we're going to do is we're going to attack the person causing all of this chaos and mischief we're going to attack the demon deck because they're jerks and they're about to put us to death uh, well actually well crap oh my gosh this is so bad 
This is so, so bad. This is so, 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 so bad. This is out. Oh, no. Oh, no. If I kill the... I could, I could easily kill the demon deck this turn. But the problem with that is, is, then, is that then the angel deck will be able to attack me. Oh, no. I'm going to lose everything. Oh, no. This is... This is awful. I have to, I just have to pass the turn. So I have to choose two creatures and sacrifice the rest. Unfortunately, that means I'm, the, the Archwing Dragon is coming back to my hand. But the rest of these just die because I can't, I have to sacrifice them. And so is this guy. He's dead. He's dead, Jim. That's okay. So, yeah. Wow, that's sucky. So now I'm hoping to force the angel deck into killing the demon deck so they don't lose all of their cards. Yikes. Untap. Untap. Draw a card. Oh, wait. This is their hand. Um... I think the play here is still to do five, but now Valkyrie Harbinger comes into play untapped. Oof. Oh, and this is untapped now. So I really need to kill off. I think what I do is I just choose lifelink I attack with everything. Let's see, how much is that really, though? They can only block one. They'll probably block the a flyer. Because they because the um, embodiment of agonies. So, 8, 12. Oh, that's not enough. That's not enough at all. What if I attack with Safara Sky's Blade? I lose it, but then I deal 16 damage. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, so I don't want to play this. That's that's what I have to do. I can't play this. I can't play Valkyrie Harbinger. Ouch. I think that means that these are the two that I want to choose to keep. That unlocks... Hellkai Charger, though. I think that's what I have to do. Okay, so I choose Life Link. I gotta gain as much life as I possibly can this turn. So that means attacking into the player, doing this with these, so that I have these two untapped for next turn. Is that what I do? I think I just attack with everything. So I choose Life Link. I'm gonna attack with everything. That'll stave off a little bit. That means I'm dealing, like I said, 16 total block. I'm going to gain 16. They're blocking four of it. So it's only 12 damage. That's eight, four more, 16. Wow, this, see what I was ta talking about with this, like, there's there's so much synergy in each deck. They kind of all play off of each other. This this the whole point of these decks is to kind of keep playing the game over and over again, even if it's kind of back and forth aggro stuff, which isn't always interesting to everybody. This really works for people who are just learning to play Magic and they get to play really cool cards that do a lot of cool things. This is why I built them. So let's see. So Embodiment of Agonies is going to die. I gain 16 life total, which brings me up here to 35, which is not ideal whatsoever. And then I end the turn, and I lose these. And I lose my commander and Angelic Skirmisher and Angel of Condemnation. When it leaves, it brings Hellkite Charger back. Ouch, that's not good. 
Okay, and when, oh no, oh no, oh no, when Angelic, when uh, Hellkite Charger <laughs> comes back, um, it brings with it, oh that's a 4-4, four, four. I don't know why that's, it brings with it a 5-5 a five, five Dragon, ouch, that's, that's a thing, that's a thing that's happening, okay, Demon's turn, Demon's, you somehow... You're sticking in there, but you're not looking too hot. Let's see, draw a card. That is not what I wanted to see. Um, I think what we do is we pay four for Strains of Night. Then we do this. Two, two. We pay two to bring back embodiment of agonies and I have three different costs again so it comes back into play with three counters and I sacrifice let's see I sacrifice this and lose two life then I paid that was two of the mana that I paid the other two mana that I'm paying is so strains of night sorry i didn't say it so it costs four mana but then it's two black two life sacrifice a swamp put a creature card from your graveyard into play so i'm also going to play this shadowborn demon when it comes into play i kill one non-demon creature i'm going to kill safara because i really 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 want the dragon deck to attack them and then at the end of my turn, oh, I have to sacrifice another swamp. Let's see. I only sacrificed one swamp. I have to sacrifice another one. So there we go. Not ideal, but that's okay. That's We're, we're almost there. We're actually, we may be able to make it. I don't know. We're going to see. We're <laughs> going to try here. Um, let's go over to dragons. Let's see, so dragons get to go. We untap. Dragons may have it, I don't know, let's see. Draw a card. Play this. We reduce by one, but we're kind of still, let's see. Can't really use much of it for anything other than I guess we keep one right there. Do it like this. So we have one colorless floating. We're going to cast Archwing Dragon. When we cast it, Sunbird's Invocation, we look at the top four. One, two, three, four. Oh, interesting. Let's see. Let's go. No, I, I can't take that. I don't want to cast that, so I'm not going to cast anything with Sunbird's Invocation. That's what I was doing. That's unfortunate that, that those go away. Okay. So we have that come to play. We get another dragon. The dragon's not going to be able to attack or anything. It's going to get sacrificed most likely at the end of the turn. So now we have... Not so much of a dilemma, just we're not sure what we're doing here. So we're going to go up five. We're going to discard Encroaching Wastes to draw a card. That's not really what we wanted to see. But we do have enough mana to activate Hulkai Charger. Actually, do I really want to do it that way, I guess? See, I'm wasting a mana. I think it's smarter to do it this way for Hulkai, Archwing Hulkai. Okay. Okay, okay. This dragon can't attack, but all the rest of my dragons can. I don't really want to sacrifice my dragons, and I have the angel deck on the ropes now. Most likely what I do is I try to kill the demons. So, this is four seven mana. This is seven mana to untap, to untap things. It's three more. Okay, so yeah, we, we're just going to go all out on 
poopy McPooper face over there, demons. And we're going to pay three mana into Moonveil Dragon to give them each plus one plus zero. And we're also going to pay the seven that we need to be able to untap all attacking creatures this turn and get another combat step. So they can block three creatures, killing one of them for sure. And probably losing both of the other ones. They can't really risk not taking damage this turn, unfortunately. Or, uh, you know, like, the demon deck, I was only 14 life. So even if they blocked two of them, that's enough to kill. So most likely they're going to take out the Hellkite Charger in revenge. Because they're petty like that. Um... And probably also block. Let's see. We, what, what do we have over there anyway? Do they block anyway just to kill off creatures? We have a 5 6 and we have a 5 4. So we can kill two 5 toughness creatures here. So going back to this Hellkite Charger for sure, Arc Queen Dragon for sure. Lathless, not, but Moonveil Dragon for sure. Okay, so that's what our kills are. So these dealt, were able to get through to the demons, and they dealt 11 plus 6, so 17 damage. That's enough to kill the demons. Demons be dead. We're actually finally making it very slowly, but we're getting there. So now second combat phase we're going to go ahead and attack again so we, we just need to we need to keep going the platinum angel can't hold on forever we'll kill it someday we'll we'll be able to get there we just have to get there <laughs> um so we're going to do that we have one blocker these are going to deal another 17 damage bringing the angels down to 18 life oh oh man Oh man, that's the end of their turn. So they did everything else they could. So, angels, what do we got? Is that our play? Is that what we do? I think so, because otherwise we're just in trouble. I think that's what we have to do. It slows them down a lot. It's, it unfortunately exposes me to some danger, but if I can planar outburst, destroying all creatures, it does destroy my platinum angel, but I don't know. Is that, is that what we do? I don't know, actually. Because, okay, so my problem here is that until they can actually destroy platinum angel, they can't kill me, but any number of demons, and there's a number of other red cards that could just burn me out. Once in, once Platinum Angel dies, I'm, I'm done for. So I could destroy all of them, but he has a boatload of mana over there. He just immediately play Lathless again, and he may not be able to attack with anything else, but Lathless does deal six damage. And so we've taken some damage from Lathless already. We blocked Lathless before. I think all that we've taken from Lathless is just, I think we've only taken this eight da or nine damage from Lathless. We have to keep track of that. Um, now that we're kind of concerned about it because Lathless really could kill us with commander damage. Oh no, that's terrible. Oh no, oh no. We're not going to be able to... Oh man, that's so bad. I think we... Commander damage is where we're going to die, I think. I think that's what's going... I think that's about what's going to happen now. <laughs> okay, so that's six mana. Let's go ahead and cast... Valkyrie Harbinger and pass the turn. Let's go ahead and collect our demon cards here. They're they're dead. They're done for. So the the idea that I was going for with the with the demon deck, the thing that I could do next is I have this card, Liliana's Contract, in my hand. 
it has it enters a battlefield and you draw cards and lose some life but the other thing about it is that at the beginning of your upkeep if you control four more demons with different names you win the game and i had three out i had a third in my hand that was low cost i could have possibly eked out something i don't think i was going to get it but you know like i i didn't really have much of a choice at that point my villas just did not come out and that's that's kind of the problem that happens sometimes with decks is that you just don't draw the cards you need and that's kind of okay it's kind of okay if a deck like i still did a lot of things with the deck and that's what i want to see is i want to see that interplay i want to see that somebody actually got to play really that's what i want so phyllis is done for we're going back to dragons. Dragons have the upper hand now. Um, untap. Keep draw card. Not a card that we want to see. Let's go ahead and go up to seven. Let's go ahead and discard that to draw a card. <laughs> Still not what we want. Play a mountain. Um, so. So. So, attack with two dragons. So we want to keep one dragon back. These are Sarkin, fire, or yeah, our Fireblood Sarkin is drawing us extra cards each turn. We really want those extra cards. So we're going to go ahead and only attack with two. They have, they just are going to need to keep track of Lathless. So most likely they're going to, oh, I think maybe they tank. Can they tank one turn? Let's see. So... Two, three, four, five, six. So 12. No, they can't tank a single attack from Lathless because I can just turn around and kill them. So they have to block Lathless, which means they're blocking with the angel that they played. And then they take the other. Let's see. I think that they go ahead and do that. One, two, three, four. So that's two, three, four. Four, five damage. Five extra damage that brings them down to eight. They can still subside. Oh, wait, maybe. Maybe they just go ahead and take it. Because I can't lose the game for sure. So maybe they don't double attack. They, because that's enough to, to do it. This is up to 18. Because essentially, so there's enough, now there's enough commander damage that if Platinum Angel dies, that's it. That's game over. So now my whole, I have to, I can't play my board wipe any longer. That's just a card that's stuck in my hand now. Okay. Untap, draw a card. Hmm. I can't I can't do Throne of the High City either. I'd be putting myself. So I can I can do Throne of the High City and hopefully Oh man, that's not good. Do I do that just to get one extra draw because they're going to get an extra draw after that? Hmm. No, I think I just play Locks it on Warhammer and call it good. I think that's what I do. Okay. Pass the turn. So dragons get to go again. Untap. Draw a card. Not really what I want to see. Let's put Sorkin up to seven. Um, I do that by discarding card and then drawing a new card. Okay, so now let's do four mana to cast Hoarding Dragon. Let's see if we can find something good. Well, before that, Sunbird's Invocation. I'd like the top one, two, three, four, five cards. Anything five or less. Oh, okay. So it's game over. <laughs> That's it. That's over. Okay. 
opportunistic dragon comes into play. <laughs> and bef the I get two triggers, Lathless, Dragon Queen, and also opportunistic dragon. So when it enters the battlefield, choose an artifact and opponent controls for as long as it remains on the battlefield. Gain control of that permanent. It loses all abilities and can't attack or block. So I gain control. <laughs> I gain control of Platinum Angel. <laughs> and immediately win at instant speed. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. That's an awesome way to, to end the game. I mean, I, yeah, I was, I was, I know that I was there, but still, man, that was, oh, oh boy. I love that. Oh, wow. That was a couple hours long. That's a good amount of time. Um, I'm thinking that it might be time to go ahead and close it up. So I don't, I don't know that there was really anything else that, that I was going to be able to do. I don't know that the angels really had any way to come out of that. Because I don't think that they had anything that like gave indestruct... I mean, there, there are things in white that give more indestructibility, but I don't think that I have much other indestructibility. Like, I was just going to have to try to gain a bunch of life and hopefully draw into... So this one, Art Aether Flux Reservoir, whenever you cast a spell, you gain a life for each spell you've cast this turn, which doesn't re really mean much, but it has pay 50 life, it deals 50 damage to something. So essentially, that's the one of the kind of win cards in the deck. Um, besides just, like, having a ton of creatures come out and kill people, um, that's, the, that's the other way to win. But I'm not really seeing... Yeah, there wasn't really much I could do. I, I I could have board wiped, but then I would basically just see another Lathless and be single turns away from losing kind of thing. So, okay. Well, I think that's about it for tonight. I don't know when I'm going to stream again or what I'm going to do, but I, I may try to stream again at some point, so... We'll just see. I don't have a schedule. I don't know when I'm going to do this. Uh, so it's just kind of on the fly. So if there's anybody out there watching, I hope you enjoyed watching some magic. But thank you and have a good night.